Okay, I'm just going to take a look at Smart Tempo, which is a really useful and quick tool for creating mashups in Logic Pro. So when you've got kind of tracks you want to mix together or um, put together like different samples from different songs, it's a way that it analyzes the song's tempo for you and it automatically beat matches them. It's not flawless and sometimes you do need to go in and do some manual edits yourself. Essentially, it's based off Logic's Flex Time Engine which is really good for kind of manually changing the timing of certain sections. So you still need to know a little bit about that, but the way it's presented using Smart Tempo it does a lot of the work for you. So sometimes it works an absolute treat. So it's worth going through just to see if it will help you out in your own um, mashup projects. So what I've got, I've got a blank logic project here and there's a few things we need to set up first. So I've got my tempo at the top and then underneath it says keep tempo. So this is your Smart Tempo option you can click on that and it'll give you different modes so keep adapt and auto so keep is your kind of general what logic automatically defaults to you record something in and that will stay at 120 whatever you do it's not gonna automatically beat match for you essentially keep means that smart tempo is off if i go to adapt what that will do brings up this little tempo map here and if I drag in a track which maybe starts at 120, drops down to 80, and up to 140, it will adapt the project tempo to match this. Quite useful if you want to add like a MIDI part into something that's been recorded live. That's kind of another use for it. Finally, you've got auto, which is what we're going to use for this demonstration. And what auto does, it's kind of a, a mixed way. It will keep one tempo based off the first track or recording that you import. So if I drag in a song from iTunes or like my downloads folder, whatever it might be, it will analyze what tempo it is, set the tempo to that. If I then drag in a second track, it will analyze what that is, automatically flex time it, warp it to the same BPM and have them play alongside each other. That's the idea in theory anyways. So we've got it onto auto. One other thing I need to do, go to smart tempo project settings and I need to change this defaults for flex and follow what this does is it will kind of trim the start off for you so say you've got like a bit of silence before the downbeat which is quite common in mp3 files this will help so i'm going to put set renew recordings to on and align bars and beats what that will do is it will mean that when you drag in a new track it will automatically smart tempo it turn the flex time on for it and it will move it so beat one lines up with a sort of start of bar in your Logic projects. I'm also going to go trim start of new regions and all that will do is it will chop off any silence and delete it. Import the audio files and set to the same. So import is would be for tracks you drag in from a, your finder or iTunes. Set new recordings is if you were to plug your own guitar in and it would automatically flex that. So leave those on, make sure that everything's ticked on line bars and beats, on line bars and beats. And in this case, I'm going for automatic mode. That's all set up, close that one down. Now we're going to get some tracks. Uh, where you get them from is completely up to you. I would probably recommend making sure they are chopped in process before. So say you have downloaded using like Soundflower or something, I would make sure that you've already got rid of some of the silence at the start and at least trimmed it down so you've only got the part of the song you want. You don't want to have recorded it off something like YouTube and have a YouTube advert like because it will analyze everything that you chuck in and that might kind of mess with the overall project tempo. So I'm just going to use my audio browser here. I've got a couple of tracks I'm going to stick in. So grab my first one and I'm going to click and drag it onto audio two in this case. Straight away it's analyzed it and it's saying that my track is at one, two, nine. If I play it with the metronome, we should find that it's correct. You ever want to see the smart tempo settings? If you double click and then move this one out of the way for a sec, you will see how this comes up with smart tempo. If I zoom in on this, you can see it's putting all these little transient markers, these little flex markers, and hopefully it will have caught them on the beat. So you can see that is spot on bar six, bar five. If you found something was slightly off, this is how you would reset it. Maybe you think that's the downbeat and not that one. Just set the downbeat 
like so, and it would mark that as B1 instead. It's not what we want to do in this case, but it's worth knowing that that is there. Yeah, undo that. You also have options to move the marker, so you can kind of manually set where that beat should fall. You can scale the selection, so you can move these, so like maybe it speeds up in tempo or slows down, you can fall. So you've got plenty of options to kind of move these around, but you'll most of the time find that it will analyze it correctly and first time will be perfect. So best thing to do, put your metronome on, hit play, see what happens. So that sounds fine to me. Let's, uh, let's drag in our second track. So I know this one's gonna be a lot slower. I'm just gonna check it in anywhere. And it hasn't changed the tempo notice, it's still on 1 to 9. The reason being, it would have stretched this one to 1 to 9. Double click on him. And I can see it's again analyzed my beats. One thing I might want to do is just make sure it's starting at the start of the project because I just sort of chucked it in anywhere. Um, a quick shortcut of doing that is click on the region and then press the semicolon button. That will just snap it to where your playhead is. So my playhead is what's on bar 2. We do the same thing. It's a really quick shortcut which comes in very handy because often if you're just kind of clicking and dragging manually you can kind of miss those points. Let's try and hit play with this one in the metronome. Again that sounds fine. If you notice it's analyzed it at 108 so we are speeding this up quite a lot from 108 to 129 but you notice the flex time engine has actually got it sounding quite musical as long as you're not stretching things over too big a distance, you'll find it will kind of be quite adaptable within a sort of a 10 to 15 beats per minute range. We pair it with the other track. So both have been matched, beat matched perfectly, and I've barely done anything. What this doesn't do is it doesn't actually kind of analyze the key for you or select the sections you need to use. So you still need to be creative in those respects. But just for quick and easy beat matching, can't really be beat. What you can do now, if you wanted to, you could adjust these tempo points. So I've got my tempo map here. Let's say I want to have this rise to, I don't know, 140 and then slowly drop back down. Let's be a bit silly with this. What you'll find is the tempo will flex both of these. If I put flex for you on, you can see it's stretching them to match our new tempos. Let's hit play. Slow down. I'm going to undo those. To get rid of them as well, you could just double click. If you want to have like a smooth tempo change, let's uh, put one of those in. So I'm going to drag this to 140. This little option here. That she has a curve, so that will slowly speed up. It's a new tempo. Okay, don't want to do that just yet. So this is perfect back to where it was. So we go on back to the start. Let's try and check in something that's a bit more problematic for Logic to deal with. So I've got an acoustic recording. This is um just a recording of someone playing acoustic guitar and singing. No click track used. Let's see what happens if we drag this in. So this is essentially a live recording. Okay, it drags it in, it would have analyzed it. Let's open it up in the smart view. So you can see it's at 82.7. But if we were to hit play on this one, okay, I'm just gonna move it back to the start. So select the region, press return, and then semicolon. So 80, 77, 75, 81, it's all over the shop. But flex time has done it, so these main beats are going to be scaled perfectly to fall on the beat. Wherever we score in the song, even though our tempo is changing, 91 in that case, it will pull it in time. Now, again, not always perfect, depending on how well the kind of track was played in the first place, your results will vary but it's definitely worth a try. Um, a couple of other things you can think about. If you've got a track which is 
a kind of constant, like a 4-4 four, four electronic track, um, you know the tempo is going to be set the same. Use the constant setting on here. Most of the time it will analyze it automatically for you, but in this case, you might have to kind of change it for some certain songs. So this one, I know the tempo wavers, hence it's on variable mode. If I had it on constant mode, it would assume the whole track in that case, it would assume the whole track is at one speed, which it really isn't. So I need to put that back to variable. <laughs> I can see it's giving me my whole tempo map there now. So that would be the whole track varying throughout everything. See, loads of time changes there. I don't want those in this case, though. I want everything to be at one fixed tempo. So it's kind of a couple of little kind of small options that you do need to be aware of just to make sure you're setting everything up correctly. And the joy of this is any MIDI parts you put in now will be synced to the project tempo and you can kind of have some fun adding extra parts in.